Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to be coloring some vintage teacups as part of the Altenew blog hop for their new release. These teacups are so pretty and they come with a lot of different designs that you can add to the cups. There's florals, there's all different kinds of polka dots and things, different elements, and hopefully other people will be showing you how to use some of these. I'm going to be doing some straight up coloring of the teacups as well as the saucer and show you how to do that. It also has some really great sentiments. They tend to do a really good job of this over at Altenew. And I'm going to take some masking tape. This is from Judykins. And first I'm going to make a mask. I'm actually going to make two masks out of it. Do some super hyper speed cutting. And I'm cutting out that top section because I want to mask out a stack of cups. And in order to do that, I want to put one cup inside another. So I'm going to take a baby wipe and just wipe off that top section. So I'm stamping it without that little curve at the top. I can add that in with a pen around whatever areas I need to later. So now I've got my mask in place. I'll put the next one. And I'm just going to tilt them back and forth as if they are a stack of cups that are going to just teeter on top of each other. And the very top one, I'm not going to wipe the ink off so that the top is completed. Use the mask again to stamp the saucer in the bottom. And now I've made a negative mask for just that section where I want to place my images. And to do the cups above, I'm just going to reuse that other mask that I used a moment ago along with the negative mask so I can just keep stamping all the flowers in there and then use a Copic multi-liner to finish off those little edges that I had wiped off. And Copic multi-liner you would need to use if you're using Copic markers so that you don't use a pen that bleeds, but you could also use any old black pen if you do it later after the coloring is all finished. So I am coloring them so as if they are cream colored teacups. I know that the blue and white ones are normally blue and white, but I wanted some color. I didn't want just white. You could alternately do it with just white. And I'm going to give them some shadows, some fairly strong shadows. You can see I'm using an E44, pretty beefy color. I considered using something darker, but I thought I could always add more later. I am going to do the coloring on the flowers after I'm done, but this allows me to really just get the placement of my shadows in there without having to worry about coloring around each one of the flowers. If you're going to do really pastel-y soft flowers, then you would need to color around them because you don't want this color to be there when you're coloring the flowers. But since I knew I was going to use blues, I decided not to worry too much about it and just color the blue over top. So I've left myself some highlight areas. I'm going in with a lighter color to just add some softening around a few spots because I wanted to make these look like they were good shiny ceramic cups. And anytime you're coloring the inside of a cup, take a cup and put it in front of you and see where the shadows are. Because on this one, if the light is coming kind of from the left, which is where I'm aiming at, shadows going to be on the left. The highlight's gonna be on the right-hand side, which is opposite what you might think. But putting a cup in front of you will help you to figure out where lighting goes on any object. So find something that's similar to what you're coloring and shine a light on it, whether it's a flashlight or a lamp from a particular side. So now for the saucer, I'm going to put some shadows, and, and it's hard to explain. I just kind of know where the shadows go. I'm considering, again, that light coming from the left, so I want to add a shadow off to the right, a cast shadow from my cups, and it's going to go up the side of this curved little saucer. And so that's, that's kind of the thought behind it. And then again, the same thing in those shadows on the left, same reason as the teacup at the top. The light is going to be hidden from that far left side. And now I can just soften it all out. I'm going to take a couple of B2 markers, B24, B26, and B2. B28 and B29 are pretty much the same color, so you don't need both of those if you're looking for a dark blue marker. But I filled in just all my flowers with the lightest blue first. And now I'm looking for those spots where I had used the darker marker and I'm going to go over that dark blue right in those spots because that's going to help to add some dimension along where that blue paint would be on the ceramic cups. So I'm just following along where that E44 had been 
and then my B26, I'm gonna soften out some of those areas around it, some of those edges. Just add a little bit more of the darker color and go around all the cups and do the very same thing. And there are a, a bunch of different blue combinations you could use for this. And this is just one of them. So please don't feel you need to use the B2s if you're going to do these, these cups. Now I looked online, my grandma used to call cups that were this blue and white a certain name. I think that was the name of the actual line of the designs rather than the whole thing. I, I'm, I'm looking for what the right word is for these vintage teacups. So if anybody has that, please do leave that in the doobly-doo down below. So I'm taking the B24 and just going over all of it to add a little more color. And then I had them all fussy cut out. Lots of fussy cutting that I did on these because I wanted to pop them onto my card base. And I'm using Desert Storm for the card base. I cut a little hole in here with my little knife, my little fingertip knife, so that I could put a string in here as I'm attaching this with some dimensional adhesive. And then I have made a little tea bag. I've done it by creating a piece that's double the size of my sentiment, plus adding a little tiny bit over the top to make a flap. And then poking the hole through so that my, my little tea bag hangs off of the top of the cups. On the Desert Storm cardstock itself, I'm gonna add my shadow, just using the E43. And depending on what paper you use, you might decide to change that color. And I just want to add that shadow so that it looks like this is sitting on top of the card with just a really light touch and not do a whole lot of fussing on it. And I did take the B24 marker and make a stripe along the bottom just to anchor it so that the card has a little bit of blue on it as well as over on the teacups themselves. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I had fun making this beautiful little card. If you would like to leave a comment, please do so. Go to my blog and there is an opportunity for you to get a gift certificate or at least enter to win a gift certificate on my blog as well as over on the Altenew blog since it is a blog hop. Here's a few other stamps that you might be interested in seeing the coloring of. Left and right are both Altenew stamps and the one in the center is more on coloring cups because I did some massive coloring of cups in that video. Thank you for joining me. Feel free to hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time.